Hello and welcome to Kung Fu Physics. Today we are going to be doing a physics GRE review and the problem we're doing today is number one on the 2001 physics GRE practice exam. So go ahead and flip to that number one 2001. Looks something like this. Just scanning the problem, I would personally be attempting a problem like this for certain because the answers are pictures, which means it's probably something very conceptual. Um, I tend to do well on physical uh, types of problems like that, so I would be answering this one for certain. Um, so let's go right into it. Number one, 2001. I would scan the answers briefly, very quickly, before I start the problem. What's different about the answers is of course those arrows. I'll have to figure out what those are. What's also sort of strange about the answers I might pick up, I would hope I could pick it up pretty quick, is that they are uh, labeled strange. It goes EDCBA left to right. So I hopefully would notice that right off the bat. That might be important. Starting on the problem. Number one, which of the following best illustrates the acceleration of a pendulum bob at points A through E? So what this is supposed to represent is a pendulum bob. Very, uh, very standard physics problem. Now, it's asking for the acceleration when the pendulum bob is at those points. Now, there's a trick that you would want to, re to uh, recognize very quickly if you're trying to do this problem fast and that is that you can make a substitution of the net force rather than the acceleration on the pendulum bob. So uh, that's what I would do. I'll explain more about that later, but um, I would be looking for the net force acting on this pendulum bob at those different points. The net force, now there are two forces that are adding vectorially to give me the net force, being the tension in the pendulum and the mass of the pendulum acting down. So looking at A, point uh, E on answer A, A um, now looking at point E, could the mass which is pointing straight down from the bob there add with a tension in the wire which is pointing up along that wire and produce a vector going off in that direction on E? No, clearly not. Number, uh, excuse me, letter B, answer B, uh, looking at E there, same thing. Could we have those vectors canceling to zero? Is the mass going to go to zero? Clearly not. Is the tension going to go to zero? Uh, no, the tension would not go to zero at that point. C is a little more interesting. We get a possibility there. Looking at point E, if we add the mass going down and the tension going up along that wire, we could produce something as a net force and therefore a net acceleration that could look like E. So I'm going to uh, knock out A and B. I'm going to keep C. D, again, you have a zero there uh, at point E. And we'll get back to that answer, but I would knock that out rather quick. And then E is interesting. E looks a lot like the tension in that pendulum, but it is missing the mass added in there vectorially. Um, so that would not represent the net force very well. That would represent the tension in the wire, but not the net force. Um, so I would end up on C. And hopefully I could uh, pick that answer and move on without too much worry about that. So that's the quick version. And going back and looking at this in a little bit more detail, the answers are interesting and they're trying to trip you up. It's good to recognize answers B and D for what they are to help you eliminate them as what they're not. Now B and D could represent fairly well the velocity which is also a vector and that could represent the velocity of that pendulum as it's going back and forth. 
Look at B and D. Does that look like the velocity? It certainly could, because we know that the velocity goes to zero as the pendulum swings out to the sides. Um, the bob stops and hangs there for a microsecond, and then uh, it swoops back down, and it's got its highest velocity uh, at the bottom of the pendulum. So that could be the velocities. Now, A and E are actually interesting as well, because uh, the truth of the matter is A and E could both represent the tension in that wire. And stop me and say, oh, no, it can't. A can't be a tension because ropes on pendulums don't push. But, you know, what if I just multiplied those by a scalar, a negative one going in the other direction and said, those are my vectors, and then I'm multiplying those by a negative one. So E is a vector uh, of magnitude negative one going in that direction at point E or whatever. So I could draw them like that. It would be stupid to draw them like that and set it up that way, but I could. So those could both represent the tension in the pendulum, which is definitely not what we're looking for. As I said before, a good trick to think in your head to doing this problem is not get messed up with thinking about acceleration because I don't know if you're like me thinking about acceleration you think about that very physically and you try and imagine which way that pendulum bob is changing its motion and realize that according to Newton's second force equals mass times acceleration when you look at that as a vector equation the what you're looking at is the net force which is a vector equals the mass which is a scalar multiplied by the net acceleration now if the force the net force happens to be zero we have something that's sitting still and not accelerating otherwise if there's a net force acting on a mass you know we're gonna have acceleration if there is a net force acting on a mass there's going to be acceleration. And when you draw little arrows to represent those vectors, you can pick which one you like. Sort of. I mean, if you, if you pick the net force, it's going to look exactly like the net acceleration, only the net acceleration is going to be multiplied by the mass. So there'll be vectors that are pointing in the same directions, only different by their magnitude. So anytime you see that, you could, uh, if it's more convenient to you, something conceptually um, in your head, to do that to substitute what the force is, the net force looks like, rather than the net acceleration. And if that's easier for you, then do it. So I don't have anything specifically on a problem like this that I would write I kind of use this as a flashcard and I will write on the back if there is a relevant equation or constant or something that I feel like I should be memorizing that way I can flip through these and have it on there as kind of like a flashcard I don't know what I would write on the, the back of this um, so what I would say in lieu of, of thinking about a specific trying to memorize a specific equation or constant today, I would say, why not think conceptually about some very common physics problems, as many of them as you can think of. Um, pendulums, masses on springs, as you're, if you're driving around later today, think about the acceleration force vectors and the velocity vectors on your car. Think about as you're hitting the accelerator, where's the velocity and acceleration vectors? As you're hitting the brakes, where's the velocity and the acceleration vectors? As you're turning a corner or if you are making a circle in your car, if you're driving in a circle, where are the velocity and acceleration vectors? If you're making a circle and your speed is increasing, in other words, as you're, you're keeping that circle but you're going faster and faster in that circle, where are your acceleration, your force, therefore your force, net force, and your velocity vectors. And think about these problems conceptually as much as you can stand to do um, for problems like this that will undoubtedly be on the physics GRE, a conceptual type problem, because you know you're gonna have to move through that pretty fast and knock out those answers. 
and leave the one that's right, hopefully. And so with that, as always, I wish you best of luck on the Physics GRE, and I will see you next time.